Thank you, Quinn. Good morning, everyone. Um, as, as Quinn said, uh, maybe before that, I should, I should uh, start by thanking uh, the Brigham Young University and everyone who participated, who took part in the organization of this beautiful symposium. This gives us a beautiful chance of uh, exchanging ideas and trying to understand what's going on in each other's country. Uh, as Quinn said, I, I uh, work in a law firm. I'm a legal practitioner. Uh, I represent uh, clients uh, mainly uh, in the employment law practice. This is one of the main things that I do. The second part is I represent mainly Christian uh, clients in Turkey in their um, uh, both vis-a-vis -vis the government and uh, the, the courts. So uh, when I uh, looked at this issue, the, the symposium, the, the topic here, I thought that maybe combining my experience in Turkey, the current experience that I get, with my experience in the European Court of Human Rights would be a good idea. Uh, so uh, my presentation, as you can see it uh, in the screen, uh, will be uh, a closer look to the freedom of religion in Turkey through the eyes of the European Court of Human Rights and Article 9 specifically. And, um, in the applications brought against uh, Turkey. Uh, I recognize the fact that there are other issues that fall under the different other different articles of the European Convention on Human Rights, but because of the time uh, I was led to speak today, I actually didn't include them in this presentation, but we can always discuss them uh, in the Q&A session. So to start with, uh, Turkey, the Republic of Turkey, became a party to the European Convention on Human Rights in 1954. Then Turkey recognized the individual, uh, uh, the application, individual application, the right to individual application in 1987. And three years after that, Turkey also recognized the uh, jurisdiction of the European Court of Human Rights. Uh, in the, uh, in the first slide, we can just see an analysis of the statistics just from last year. This is the latest analysis, and you can see the, the shares of the, the countries that, against which the applications are filed in the court. You can see Turkey. It represents 13.6% of the, the entire applications filed last year. So it is, in this respect, the fourth uh, country, uh, Ukraine, Italy, Russia, and then Turkey. <coughs> And this is an, an interesting uh, data because up until 2012, Turkey uh, it was receiving a lot of applications and many decisions were given uh, in relation to Turkey, against Turkey. But in 2012, we had the right to individual application with the Turkish Constitutional Court as an additional instance before the European Court of Human Rights. So you can see its uh, impact, especially last year, in relation to the applications declared inadmissible or struck out, applications in which judgments delivered uh, 115 at the very uh, right. Uh, this is because there was an additional remedy instance in domestic law. So the, uh, the remedy could be found there before going to the European Court of Human Rights at the international level. This is, again, uh, another interesting uh, data. It covers between 1959 to 2014, until last year. And it refers to each article. I am uh, not sure and optimistic that everyone can see uh, the, the, the figures there. But Turkey, it is, it is the, the third. It's actually here. And Article 9 is here that we will be mentioning today. So since 1954, actually since Turkey recognized the, the court's jurisdiction, there have been nine judgments where the court ruled that Turkey violated Article 9 of the convention. And, and five of these decisions are about the conscientious objectors, and the rest are various uh, other parts. Of the uh, uh, of Article Nine, so Article Nine is this. It is it is two paragraphs. The, the first paragraph starts with recognizing the absolute nature of the right. It says everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. 
This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief, change, and uh, freedom either alone or in community with others and in private or public to manifest his religion, this is the second item, or belief in worship, teaching, practice, and observance. <laughs> the, the first paragraph refers to the absolute nature of this uh, right, which neither the state nor anybody else can interfere. This is, the, this is uh, often referred to as the uh, forum internum. This is the internal space of everyone. Then uh, paragraph two comes into play. Uh, this is uh, about the exception to the first paragraph, to the right recognized in the first paragraph. It says, freedom to manifest. In the first paragraph, we talked about freedom to change and, and freedom to manifest. But the second paragraph only refers to how the freedom to manifest could be restricted. Freedom to manifest one's religion or beliefs shall be subject to subject only to such limitations as are prescribed by law and are necessary in a democratic society in the interests of public safety, for the protection of public order, health or morals, or for the protection of the rights and freedoms of others. So these are the, the elements that the state authorities can rely on, can use, in order to restrict the right recognized in the first paragraph of Article 9. It is not as simple as that in, in practice. Uh, huge discussions are going on, of course. And the, the reflection of this right, Article 9, uh, the right to uh, freedom, thought, conscience, and freedom, uh, religion, is, is uh, taking place under Article 24 of the uh, Constitution, as you can see in this slide. You will notice that the first three paragraphs, they are more or less the same uh, as the first paragraph of Article 9. So recognizing the similar rights there. The fourth and the fifth paragraphs, they regulate religious and moral education and the, the obligation that no one shall be allowed to exploit or abuse religion, the, the feel, religious feelings, etc. The fourth paragraph is actually covered by Article 2 of the first protocol to the convention, but Turkish constitution just put this together because uh, it, it preferred to regulate it under uh, this paragraph because it reg regulates religious education. Well, my um, aim here is to make sure that everybody, after this session, leaving this room, has at least a bit of an idea what Turkey's issues before the European Court of Human Rights are. So just maybe you will be uh, having the titles of the issues which will be uh, making me happy. Uh, so I will go through each issue and refer to the European Court of Human Rights case law about it. Helen, can you please let me know if your uh, ID, any of your IDs, bears information about your religion? No, you don't need to show it to me. <laughs> You don't think? OK. Mine does. My ID in Turkey, it does. Uh, it, is, it is written religion, Islam, for me. And it is required that I submit my ID to the government authorities, to the police, at the airport, when I go to the banks, etc. So it actually refers to my manifestation of my religion whenever somebody else asks me to show them my ID. You don't have it? OK, thank you. Um, I, I, I was not bothered about this, but apparently Sinan Ushik was, as you can see in the first slide. This is a, an application filed by an, a, a citizen of the Republic of Turkey, an Alevi citizen, which is a, a branch of Islam, which has around 20 million uh, uh, believers in Turkey, followers in Turkey. It has differences with the Sunni uh, interpretation of Islam, which we will come to in a, in a, uh, in a couple of minutes. And, and he asked the, the national authorities to change this, because in his ID it was written, his religion was indicated as Islam. He said, change it to Alevi. He was denied this uh, request. 
Then he filed a lawsuit. He lost before the uh, 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 domestic courts. The domestic courts, when faced with such an application, they refer the topic to the religious uh, presidency of, the, of religious affairs, which is linked to the prime ministry. And the response from the uh, uh, presidency of religious affairs was, Alevism is not a separate standalone religion, so it could not be indicated in the people's IDs. So this is why the applicant was refused this right. Then he took the case before the European Court of Human Rights. The European Court of Human Rights looked at the issue and said, <coughs> Alevism is a belief which must be protected under Article 9 of the Convention. And it is not for the state to draw the borders of what is a separate religion and what is not. And this was one of the items that it, it put the, the judgment on. The second uh, pillar was the mere fact that there is a religion box identifying each individual, individual's religion is enough to amount to a violation of the convention because it is about the right to manifest your religion. And when the police asks you in the street for your ID, automatically you, you, you are asked to manifest your religion. And in 2006, there was a uh, change in our legislation which uh, provided for the uh, people who desire to ask the uh, civil registration authorities to leave, to delete the religion, uh, Islam, uh, or whatever is written there, empty, leave it blank. But even for that, you need to disclose that you don't believe in what was written there. So this was, again, a manifestation of your religion. So the court recommended to Turkey that it could remove from its uh, legislation, Civil Registration Act, the obligation to ink that the IDs include a religion uh, box. So this is, this is not done, but this is where the, the ECHR case law is at the moment. The, the second part uh, is about a decision. Uh, uh, again, the same request from a Jehovah's Witness. He was denied the right to change his uh, religion in, this, uh, uh, in the uh, religion box. And the, the, another similar conclusion for a Baha'i citizen, they were denied this uh, right in Turkey. Alevism, we, we, we talked about it just a moment or two ago. It is um, the Alevi population in Turkey, the people say it is around 20 million. Some say it is about 25 million. They interpreted uh, uh, Islam differently, different than uh, uh, the Sunni way of interpretation. They don't go to mosques. They go to gem evis. Gem mean, means gathering. So they gather in gem evis and they, they sing. They don't pray namaz like the uh, Sunni majority does. Uh, they don't believe that going to uh, hajj, pilgrimism, is necessary. They don't interpret it that way. And uh, they have gem evi, houses of gem, they are places of worship, which are not recognized by the government because if a uh, worship, place of worship is recognized by the government, then it enjoys some taxation benefits, utility benefits, electricity, water, etc. But if, it, if this is not a, a, a place of worship recognized by the government, then these benefits are not granted. In this case, Cumhuriyetçi Eğitim ve Kültür Merkezi Vakfı, this is a foundation that runs Cemevis all around Turkey, uh, they asked for an exemption. Uh, from paying the uh, uh, electricity bills. This was refused because the authorities said, you are not a separate religion, you are not recognized. Uh, because if you are recognized, as shown in the uh, presentation, the, the, these bills, electricity bills, for example, they are uh, paid by a fund from a fund administered by the Directorate of Religious Affairs. So they after failure with, before the domestic authorities, they put the case before the ECHR, before the European Convention on Human Rights. There was a violation of Article 14, a prohibition of discrimination, in conjunction with Article 9 of the Convention, because the ECHR said, you don't have any justifiable grounds to treat the places of worship of Alevis according to uh, the, the facts of the case. So you need to grant them this status 
so that they can enjoy the benefits that you recognize to other religions in your national legislation. Uh, a similar case, Doğan and others versus Turkey, is now pending before the uh, Grand Chamber of the Court. It is filed in 2010. It is a, a request made by 203 Alevi citizens of the Republic of Turkey. Uh, it is now pending, so we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but it is, it is uh, in the Turkish High Court, the, the Supreme Court of Appeals, uh, ruled in, in, on the 28th of May this year that the places of worship of Alevis should be given, uh, recognized as a place of worship. So I don't know what the impact of this national decision will be on the Doğan and others versus Turkey case, this is now pending, but this is a very positive uh, uh, improvement because the national court, the high court in Turkey, adopted the, uh, the, the facts and findings of the European Court of Human Rights in the Cumhuriyetçi Eğitim ve Kültür Merkezi lawsuit. So it came to the same conclusion as the uh, ECHR did. Wearing of headscarves at school, this is another issue we, ha we, we actually had, I need to use past tense there, because uh, as the, the current status of legislation in Turkey is uh, <coughs> students can go to schools uh, with headscarves. It is, it is a little bit, uh, it is resolved for the moment. And in public service, public servants can wear the headscarf. But still, this was a, a, an issue discussed by the European Court of Human Rights in Leyla Shahin versus Turkey. This is a grand chamber judgment again. Uh, th in this case, the applicant was a, a student at the, at the medicine faculty. Uh, she was wearing the headscarf when she was coming to class. And at the time, uh, this was not allowed by the legislation. Oh, really? OK. And the, the, the court looked into the uh, case law, uh, saying that this uh, wearing of the headscarf relying on a, constitution, a, court, a constitutional court decision by the Turkish uh, state, saying it is for the national authorities to decide if this is necessary or not. So it said there is no violation. So it is up to the national states, because I, as the international judge, am not better placed than a national authority to rule, to pass judgment on that. Uh, the Turkish constitutional court decisions on religious clothes, two uh, recent judgments where the court adopted the ECHR principles and uh, ruled on, on violations uh, for two people uh, in Turkey. Uh, this is a positive uh, uh, development because this is after uh, the constitutional changes in 2010 and the right to individual application was recognized. This is a, still a domestic remedy now. Uh, conscientious objection. This is, this is a, still a structural issue going on in Turkey. We, we had uh, five lawsuits where violations were found by the European court because of the lack of uh, the, the option for conscientious objectors to do community service and that they need to go to the army without any other option. The, the European Court of Human Rights says this is not a, a, uh, the, the, the proper way of handling this and it is, uh, that this situation is still the same under the national legislation. Missionary activities, there is no ECHR case law on that, but this was a decision by the Turkish High Court where the Turkish High Court referred to Kokinakis versus Greece. This is a decision of the European Court and said the propaganda, religious propaganda, is a part of uh, Article 9 of the Convention. It's safeguarded there, and the national authorities don't have the luxury to restrict it if there is no uh, plausible explanation to that. This is uh, positive, and thank you for your patience and attentions. I look forward to the discussion in the Q&A session. <laughs> <laughs>